slightly different video to, to normal uh, in that I'm going to be throwing, but I'm not going to be talking about throwing. Um, there isn't really a good video demonstration of what I'm going to talk about, so I'll just do it as a background. But basically, I'm going to be talking about this glaze and um, why Frit 3269 is interesting. Um, but I've got to sort of shade the glaze first. Uh, I'm calling it Midnight Surf. It's this really dark blue black glaze with white highlights where it face separates. Really dark, even over white clay, which is not typical for floating blues, but you can get some translucency in it as well. Uh, and then where it gets thick, it gets that white face separation. Combines really nicely with um, other glazes, really interesting. And all of that from a glaze that is basically the same as my normal floating blue, but with one small difference, which is where the frit comes in. So, uh, this is going to be a bit glaze nerdy, so if you're not interested in that, um, maybe just watch this with the sound off. But basically, starting from the beginning, Cone 10 glazes have four basic components. So the base recipe of a cone tank glaze will have two types of fluxes, the alkaline metal and the alkaline earth, and then a source of silica and a source of alumina. And you get them from a, a whole range of different ingredients, but those are the four main components. So everything that you add will be supplying one or more of them um, or will be a colourant, but then they, shouldn't, they generally don't get included in the base recipe. So, at cone 10, you can add a feldspar, and that brings in your alkaline metal flux, and then you add a source of alkaline earth. And that would be something like whiting, or wollastonite, or something like that. Uh, can also be strontium carb, um, or barium, or something like that. But the point is, um, the feldspar very rarely contributes, or when feldspars don't contribute, but your alkaline metal source very rarely affects the alkaline earth source of flux. So you get full control over every single part of it. Um, when you're bringing glaze down to cone 6, you need to add boron. And that's normally done with a frit or jersey borate or something like that. And those generally bring with them um, an alkaline metal flux. And the reason this is important is because they're the thing that's largely responsible for the colour that the colourants go. So. Some colorants like cobalt will generally go blue in everything, but some like chrome can be green, chartreuse green or deep chrome green or pink, depending on the alkaline earth flux. And when you have a cone six phase, generally about half of that is already decided for you by your flux selection and it's usually either calcium or calcium and magnesium. And that is fine for most glazes, they're probably the two, calcium at least is the, the kind of the most dependable I find of them. Like most things work with calcium and generally there's no good reason to want to use anything other than calcium. So say like frit one, Three, uh, three, one, three, four. We'll just bring in calcium, and so you can use that for pretty much everything. Uh, Jet borate will bring in calcium and magnesium. That's why it has more phase separation because it's got two of them. Um, but also, why it's more variable. So depending on what you want to do, you pick your boron source, and that determines which um, alkaline earth fluxes are automatically brought in and then you can add to that. 
Now if you've seen my recent floating blue blog post, you'll know that I tested um, changing the other, the, the added Alpine Earth Fluxes and found that normally you'd add um, whiting and talc so you'd add more calcium, more magnesium. But actually, I got a nicer colour if I swapped the talc for strontium carb because the magnesium turns it brown and it goes more of a blue-black um, kind of away from greeny yellow and more towards blue with more strontium. Anyway, all of that building up to why 3269 is interesting and that is because it brings boron but no alkaline earth so it has got alkaline metal flux it's got boron it's got some silica some alumina it's basically all the parts of a glaze although not necessarily in the proportion you'd want them but all the parts of a glaze other than the alkaline metal so you can combine it with strontium carb as I did for that glaze and it's fluxed more or less entirely with strontium as the alkaline earth flux. Um, on some glazes that won't change anything, but on the floating blue it's had quite a dramatic effect on how it behaves, the colours it generates, and it's far more punchy than the normal version of it. It's, that glaze is more or less on the same place on the maps it's got similar silica and alumina levels, similar flux ratio, colourants are the same. Um, unlike normal floating blues I'm using um, sorry, went dead there. manganese, not magnesium, I'm using manganese in place of red iron oxide. So normally the colourants would be rutile at 4%, red iron oxide at 2 cobalt of one and I've just swapped the red iron for um, manganese and you can do it as a straight swap because they both flux in a very similar way so the glaze behaviour will be the same and I think that improves floating blues regardless of the base or at least in the test that I've done so far it does um, But yeah, so with FRIT uh, 3269, you can combine it with anything. So you could have a purely zinc or a purely barium or a purely strontium fluxed. Well, uh, as far as alkaline uh, earth fluxes go. And then for the alkaline metals, it's just uh, potassium and sodium, like most of the, like most of the feldspars will be unless you're using lithium carb or spodumene you're not getting lithium and you generally don't because it's more expensive because of all the batteries so as a general rule if you're using a feldspar you have the same sort of um, ratio of them with 3269 and you get complete control over the alkaline earth flux. So I don't have any barium at the moment, but I'm going to get some. I haven't bothered before because it is actually toxic, unlike a lot of the things where the toxicity is somewhat overblown. You've got to be quite careful with barium in its powder form. Um, and I've never seen the point in having any because, you know, the colours won't be that different. But now the colours are entirely dependent on, like I can completely control it, I can have a purely barium blaze, I don't know what that would do in a floating blue, um, but I can find out once I've ordered some. It's not going to necessarily change that many glazes, like you could, if you just used it to recreate the glaze that you already had, you'd just end up putting loads of whiting in and bringing the calcium level up and it wouldn't do anything interesting and if you've got like a chrome tin you need it to be calcium so even though you've got complete control over which flux you select you'd still have to select calcium if you wanted it to work 
So in that sense, it's not any better. Um, at the moment, it's harder to come by in the UK, but I have spoken to Pottery Craft about importing some. So it's possible that will become one of the more readily available for it. Uh, at which point you could have base recipes where you just switch out um, your alkaline earth flux to see what difference it makes and you know, there's no harm in doing it that way. What's really nice, not that it makes a huge difference, but um, because of this you can create very very straightforward recipes. So the, the actual proportions of things in that floating blue recipe I think is 30, 30, 25, 15 and you can do another version which is 30, 30, 30, 10 where normally you'd have to have five ingredients at cone six because you'd have a feldspar and a boron source whereas in this case the fritz doing both and it does them both in the right kind of proportions you end up with the chemistry that you'd want um, at a sensible level of fret. So it could, if it's readily available, be a very easy way to just make comb six glazes with nice round numbers, four ingredients, and then controlling what you want them to do. But certainly if you want something where it's fluxed entirely with strontium or barium, uh, you need a frit like that to, to do it at cone six. So, all very interesting. Um, I don't know how many completely new and unique glazes I'm going to be able to get out of it, but I've certainly got a few more things to try. It behaves interestingly with chrome and cobalt with strontium with the flux, and barium should do other interesting things. You know, might be interesting, might not be, but the fact that you can now, well, the fact that I can now, I mean, this frit has been available for however long, but I've just not have got my hands on any of it until now. Um, but having that control, at the very least, lets you see if there are any interesting glazes to be made. Um, and in some cases there will be, in some cases, It'll come out exactly as it would otherwise. And then it just depends on the other attributes of blazes made with it. They don't seem to crawl that much, but they don't seem entirely free from crawling either. So, I mean, maybe that's the 15% clay and the 10% version won't do it. I need to test that a bit more because I haven't worked much with that base. Um, then it just comes down to cost and whether or not um, once pottery craft can import the big sacks of it whether that comes out with a similar kind of cost to the other fruits in which case it will still be a reasonably expensive way to make a glaze because you need 30% of it um, whereas with other frits you might only be using 20, 15, 20 percent. Um, don't know that at the moment. Don't think it's much more from the supplier. So it possibly just be a question of economy of scale and how much people want it. If I'm the only one buying it in the UK then I doubt they'll keep importing it for me. But all of that remains to be seen. In the meantime, if you've got access to it and want to try some interesting glazes, um, I've posted the Midnight Surf recipe on Glazy. I'll link it in the comments. Um, and I'll post any other interesting ones I come up with as and when I come up with them. <laughs>